again everybody I've recently got a few things to upgrade my solar and I was going to show you what all I've got set up the Sun is not really out yet it is only like 8 30 in the mornings but we're not really getting enough to really charge anything yet but the good news is after about 11 o'clock or so we get enough to top off the batteries that I got so let me show you what all I've got up here and at the end, I'm going to do a little comparison as to the performance of my old batteries versus the new ones. And uh, I'm pretty impressed with them. Anyway, let's go up here and check it out. Okay, first of all, we'll go through what all we have here. Now, right here we have, of course, our two charge controllers. The 40 amp is actually hooked up to the bigger array. This one is not hooked up yet. I've got a couple more solar panels coming. Um, I'm going to put a total of four on this one. That way it doesn't max out the 30 amp. Uh, four of them should be pretty much good enough to supplement what I've got. You can see there's already some voltage coming in. There are really no amps yet, like a half an amp. But... Um, like I said, the sun is just now coming out. And the batteries just now hit 12.9. Tell you about that in a minute. Okay, so what we have here, we have, this is actually a breaker box that I had. And it is, it's actually an AC breaker box. You can see the color that it originally was. I painted the, I painted the front cover to um, match, you know, where everything's black. I think it'll look a little bit better. The first four panel array that is going to go to this charge controller um, is going to go to this breaker, which I don't have all the panels yet for that, so this is off. Um, the wires already run up. It just goes into the breaker. The second one is coming in from the, the eight panels that are hooked up. Coming in here, it goes to the bus bar inside right up here, and then it goes through this breaker. You can turn this breaker off to cut the power to the charge controller from the solar panels. That way, if you need to work on your batteries or disconnect your batteries for any reason, all you got to do is turn this off beforehand because you never want to have your panels hooked to your charge controller and unhook your batteries. Because if you do that, you can overload the charge controller. It runs out of this breaker straight back out and into the second charge controller and I have it I have them labeled this is array one and this is array number two and array number two is the bigger one um, that's why I have the 40 amp charge controller on array number two the wiring in here is kind of a mess right now because I haven't got anything strapped or anything like that. I'm going to try to neaten it up. And also, I was thinking maybe of building some kind of a race coming up through here to block off all this wiring and protect it. Um, once I get it neatened up, it shouldn't look too bad. But uh, as of right now, I'll probably wait till I get my other panels hooked up before I try to neaten everything because I'm going to have another wire running into here. And another wire running up to here so that way I can neaten everything up at the same time but all right now coming out of the charge controllers uh, we go down this one actually goes through the the fuse panel here it's not fused here because this is just providing power to the fuse panel for my like my cigarette lighter plugs my diesel heater and uh, lights so yeah that's all of these and see this just comes in and hooks directly to that same terminal comes straight back out now this goes down to i got a terminal block here this is your negative connection coming from the batteries and this charge controller goes in right here the other one comes in here and it goes to the bigger wire because we're combining the amperage from these and the amperage goes up so you want to have a bigger wire now this is oversized for what i need but 
I would rather have a bigger wire. That way, when I hook in Zephyr's charge controller also into here and up here, which I have the wires running in and hooked in, and then just plug them in out there. That way, when I hook that charge controller into it, um, that will also add to the amperage that's coming through here. So you want to step up your wire size. That's what I have done. And the negative goes down through the floor. And we'll get into that in just a second. Of course, the positive doing the same thing coming into the... I may change this. I may actually have... Uh, a wire coming from here up to there and then just have it directly going to the uh, battery connection here but as of right now that's the way the positive is running out of here it's running into there down to this connection now this connection is running to this side of the little breaker here and this is a 150 amp breaker. And all you do, I'm not going to do it right now because the battery's charging. Um, but all you do is push the button here and it pops this little thing down. And when that thing pops down, that means the circuit is disconnected and the batteries are disconnected. That would be when you were wanting to do some kind of service on the battery and didn't want to have power going into them. In the case of popping this, I mean, this is also to protect against overcurrent, too. But in the case of popping this or pushing this button to disconnect this, you would want to first come up here and turn off both these breakers. Because if not, then you're going to have power going to your controller, and that would not be good. All right, so now we are going to get into what's under the floor here. Okay, so under this door, which it's kind of a roughly cut door, uh, what happened was <laughs> my jigsaw, um, I don't know why, but the blade somehow got bent or something, and it went way out. Uh, after that point, I really didn't care what it looked like. This is going to be under the carpet anyway, or under the floorboards or whatever. Um, so it's not really going to matter. But I figure this is a pretty good place to put them. I've actually got room for probably one more back there. And probably one or two this way. But this is two 100 amp hour. Chins is the, is the brand name of them. It's the 100 amp hour. This one. It is this one right here. This 100 amp hour one. Um, 12.8 volts. So. It is an actual lithium iron phosphate battery. I will tell you this. Lithium is night and day difference compared to lead acid. Uh, that's what I had. As of yesterday, actually, I had a lead acid battery bank. A 200 amp hour lead acid battery bank. Which you can only use... Um, up to 50% of a lead acid battery, and that means that you only get really 100 amp hours out of a 200 amp hour battery bank. With these, I get 200 amp hours. You can use this well, probably about 100 and 160 amp hours, something like that, because you you really can safely use up 80% of your battery capacity. And that being said, the battery capacity is different on these. Between these two charge controllers. Uh, there is a difference if you look here and I don't know why that is this is like 0.2 volts off from this one actually it was 0.1 before now it's okay this one is actually charging the battery right now is what it's doing but okay the battery last night started out at uh, I think it was like 13.4 volts and after the battery ran all night, all right, so last night, um, running all night long on these batteries, these two 100 amp hour batteries, I was running the refrigerator, I was running the water heater, lights, internet, uh, 
router, uh, telephone, the diesel heater, which was kicking on and off all night, and recycling the glow plug and everything because it because I have the thermostat on it that completely shuts down the diesel heater and then restarts it. So it was cycling the glow plug on and off. I don't know how many times I was asleep, so I don't really know. But it was cycling on and off to keep the temperature in the house comfortable. So with all that, uh, I didn't have the TV hooked to it yet. I'm going to now that I know how well it works. But with all that, uh, the batteries this morning, after running all night from about, I would say till about 4.30, 5 o'clock, we were getting enough solar to basically run everything without backing up from the battery. So from about 5 o'clock last night to about 7, 8 o'clock this morning, the battery was saying 90, uh, let's see, 98%. So I used overnight 13 hours of run time running the, like, all the stuff that I just said. And it only used it down to 98%. That's 2% in 13 hours of use running all that stuff. I'm pretty impressed with that. We've never had that before. Usually by the time the solar starts kicking in in the morning, I have even had to put the battery charger on the batteries before the sun came out enough to charge them when I was using the lead acid and running that same stuff every night. Um, yeah. I, I'm, I'm very impressed with these <laughs> so far. Now, of course, I've only had them, had these for one full night, so I don't know how they're going to do from now on, but so far, they did great. I'm very impressed with them. And they are charging up right now. I'm getting... Well, 0.6 of an amp so far, <laughs> and 51 volts. But they are up to like 13.2. Uh, I did notice that this 40 amp charge controller, when we had full sun yesterday, was actually going up to 40 amps. It, it was taking all the 40 amps and putting them, putting it directly into those batteries, and they were taking it, and they charge up pretty fast. Um, once you get up to like 40 amps, and then plus this other 30, once I get it hooked up, that, I mean, you got 70 amps going into the batteries. And plus whatever comes out of Zephyr, too. Uh, that's, that's in full sun. So what I'm wanting to do is I'm wanting to over-engineer this to the point that on cloudy days, we still get a full charge by the end of the day. Uh, or at least 80% uh, or so. If I can do that, then I'm going to be happy. That's why I'm putting so, so many solar panels on the house. But so far, I'm very satisfied with the lithium batteries. Uh, like I said, it's only been a day, and I will update. If anything goes wrong with these batteries, I'll let you all know. Uh, these, um, I watched a few videos on them before I bought them, and they are apparently really well-made batteries. They don't have a low temperature cutoff. Uh, but that that doesn't concern me. They're mounted inside, um, so that doesn't concern me at all. Of course, lithium batteries do not vent anything. They are sealed, so you don't have to vent them. The lead acid batteries had to be vented outside, so I had them in a plastic box with a vent running to the like through the outside. So you don't have to do that with these. You can run these with no vent, which is which is what I'm doing. They're just sitting underneath the stairs. So yeah, so far, I do like them. I guess that's gonna be about all for this little video. I appreciate everybody watching, and I'll see y'all on the next one.